Hello friends, I'm not Jim Nance. I don't play him on TV. Just, no. I'm Kurt Berglund, and this is Classic Replay Baseball. The date is April 10th, 1981, and the location is Boston's Fenway Park. The White Sox are visiting the Boston Red Sox to open the 1981 season, and there's been a lot going on. During the time that the offseason took place, the sale for the White Sox from Bill Veck to a group led by Jerry Reinsdorf was approved by Major League Baseball. And the during that time, uh, the offseason, the Red Sox completed a trade with the California Angels, trading center fielder Fred Lynn for Carney Lansford as the principals in those tra in that trade. And the White Sox, infused with new cash, went on and signed free agents Greg Luzinski and Ron LaFleur. And then the Red Sox somehow um, messed up the uh, mailing of a new contract to Carlton Fisk, and it passed the deadline for doing so, and Fisk became a free agent and was eventually signed by the White Sox. This opening day then represented Carlton Fisk's coming back to Fenway Park for his first game in any uniform other than a Red Sox uniform, and he was doing it that first game in Fenway Park. And then the heroics happened. The game was a tight one throughout, and Fisk ended up hitting a late-inning home run to help the White Sox win. The opposing pitchers in this game were left-hander Britt Burns, the American League Rookie Pitcher of the Year in 1980, against Dennis Eckersley, who had had a bad year in 1980 and was hoping to rebound in 1981. So, with all of that on the table, we are doing a replay of that very game. You can see the game um, on YouTube, and we're going to replay that game using classic replay baseball. April 10th, 1981, White Sox at the Red Sox, Britt Burns versus Dennis Eckersley. Let's go to the starting lineups. For the visiting White Sox, leading off in left field is Ron LaFleur. Batting second at first base, Mike Squires. Batting third behind the plate, it's Carlton Fisk. Batting fourth, the DH, Greg Luzinski. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Chet Lemon. Batting sixth, right fielder, Harold Baines. Batting seventh, third baseman, Jim Morrison. Batting 8th, 2nd baseman, Tony Bernazard. And batting ninth, shortstop, Bill Allman. For the, on the mound, of course, Britt Burns. For the Red Sox, the homestanding Red Sox, leading off in right field, it's Dwight Evans. Batting 2nd. At 2nd base, it's Dave Stapleton. Joe Rudy bats 3rd, he's the DH. Jim Rice bats 4th, he's in left field. Tony Perez bats fifth, he's at first base. Carney Lansford bats sixth, he's at third base. Glenn Hoffman bats seventh, he'll play shortstop. Gary Allenson bats eighth, he will do the catching. And Rick Miller will bat ninth and play center field in place of the departed, actually not dead, but just traded, Fred Lynn. And Miller was part of that trade. All right, so let's get to some replay baseball. Here's Ron LaFleur stepping in against Dennis Eckersley. My dice going here. Here we go. And the pitch is a three on Eckersley's card. It's a two. That makes a five, and that makes a strikeout for Eck to get this game going. We're underway. Now it's Mike Squires, left-handed batting first baseman. 
It's a three for Eckersley's card. It's a 16. That makes a 19. That's hit to right. Here comes Dwight Evans, and he's going to put it away for out number two. Two gone in the top of the first, and now it's Fisk. Pitch to Carlton. That's a three in Eckersley's card. It's a 26. That makes a 29 in column six for Fisk. And that's a base hit. To right field, Fisk takes him the other way for the first hit of the ball game, the first hit of the season in the replay. And now it's Luzinski coming to the plate against Eckersley as Fisk holds it first. Pitch for Mech is a three. And for Luzinski, that's a, I'm sorry, that's a four on Eckersley's card. It's a three on Luzinski's card. That makes seven in column three. And that's a base hit to left field. Drops in front of Jim Rice. Fisk will hold it second with two outs, and there's two on with two outs for Chet Lemon. Eckersley the stretch, and the pitch is a two and a three, and that makes strike three on Lemon, and that retires the White Sox in the first. They get two on on two hits, but do not score. They leave two. And after a half inning... It's time for some Red Sox offense, if there is any. Evans, Stapleton, and Rudy coming up. Britt Burns with the wind and the pitch. That's a two. That's a two. That's an 11. That makes 13 in column three, and that's a base hit to center field. Drops in front of Lemon. Chet throws it back in, and there's one on with nobody out. Burns the stretch. Pitch, two, and... And a 20, that's a 22 in column three. Hit to right, here comes Harold Baines toward the foul line, and he makes the catch as Evans retreats to first base. One gone, now it's Rudy. Burns the stretch one more time, and the pitch, it's a two, it's a one. That's a four in column five, and that one is grounded to Tony Bernazar. Bernazard goes to Allman for one. The relay to Squires is not in time. Rudy beats the rap with two outs. He's safe at first. Evans retired on the fielder's choice, and now it's Rice. Burns the stretch one more time, and the pitch to Rice is a 19 in column six. Driving Baines back to the track, but no further. He puts it away for out number three, and we've played a scoreless first inning. The Red Sox get a hit and leave one, but don't score. Go to the top of the second. It'll be Baines, Morrison, and Bernazard for Tony La Russa's. You've heard of him, Tony La Russa. He used to manage the White Sox. The pitch to Baines from Eckersley is a two, and a 32, that's a 34. In column five, hey, struck him out. That's three for Eck. And now it'll be Morrison. Hoping to light somebody's fire. Eck winds and delivers. Four and a seven. In column three, base hit left field. Drops in front of Rice. He throws it back in. Now it's Bernazard. Eck the stretch and the pitch to Tony. It's a four. That's an 11. That makes 15 in count three. Line shot right at Hoffman. Two down now, and now it's Allman. Eck the stretch and the pitch. That's a two. That's a three. That's a strikeout. Four Ks for Eck in two innings. The White Sox are retired after one and a half. We have no score. Burns will face Perez, Lansford, and Hoffman in inning number two for the Red Sox. Perez freshly arrived from the uh, Expos the season before. Hey, struck him out. That's Burns' first strikeout. One gone in the second. Now it's Lansford. Pitch to Carney. Is going to be our first fielding check. This is a back. That's a 16. It's hit to Allman. Allman is a 
three, I believe. No, he's a two that makes it an 18. He gloves it and throws to Squires, and there's two outs in the second. Now it's Hoffman. Burns the stretch, and the pitch to Glenn is grounded to Squires. That's going to be no trouble. He'll take it himself, and it's a one, two, three second for Burns. We go to the third. And it's no score in Boston. Top of the order coming for the White Sox. LaFleur, Squires, and Fisk. LaFleur struck out in the first. The pitch to him is going to be a 7 in column 6. And that's a base hit to center field. He's on. And that'll bring up Squires. Eckersley the stretch and the pitch, and there goes the floor, and there is potential trouble. Uh, Got to check Allenson's number. It is a, here it is three and he steals it so LaFleur steals second Squires is down in the count 0 oh, and 1 and LaFleur is in scoring position Eckersley the stretch and the pitch is a 2 on Eckersley's card it's a 1 on Squires that's a 3 in column 5 it's grounded to third Uh, I'm going to say LaFleur holds, and the throw goes to Perez for out number one. Now it's Fisk. Pitch to Carlton is a two and a four, and that's strike three swinging. Eckersley gets him with a hook, and it's five strikeouts for Eck now in two and two-thirds. Luzinski, last chance saloon in the third to get LaFleur in from second base. It's a 32 in column one. 32 in column one. Walked him. So two on now for Lemon. Eckersley's worked himself into a little bit of a jam here. Pitch from Eck to Lemon is a six. That's grounded to... Stapleton at second base. He's a three. And he's going to make that play to Tony Perez, and that'll retire the White Sox in the third. We played two and a half. No score in Boston. Burns will face Allenson, Miller, and Evans. 8 9 1 for the Red Sox. Ground ball, Squires. He loves it. And flips to Burns covering, and there's one down. Now it's Miller, lefty, lefty. Two, and a 32 makes 35 in column three. And that's going to be trouble. It's going to split Baines and Lemon, and Miller's got himself a one-out double. He's in scoring position now for Evans. Burns the stretch. He checks Miller. The pitch home. Hey, he struck him out. That's two strikeouts for Burns. And with two outs now, it's up to Stapleton to bring home the run. Dave's 0 for 1. The pitch, 2 and a 19. And that's a 21 in column 5. Ground ball knocked down by Morrison. Now we have to check Morrison's error rating. It is a five. So if I roll a six, there's going to be a run scoring. Nope. He keeps it in the infield. And Miller advances to third, but that's it. So there's Red Sox at the corners with two outs now for Rudy. Burns the stretch. The pitch. 
three and a 16 makes 19 in column six. That's to right. It's driving Baines back to the track, but he's going to make the catch, and that will retire the Red Sox in the third. So they threaten with a couple of hits, but don't score and leave two. After three, we are scoreless in Boston. Now it's Baines, Morrison, and Bernazard in the top of the fourth against Eckersley for the White Sox. The pitch is a four and a 32. That makes 36 in column three. That's going to be down the line. Going to rattle around in the corner. Rice has to go get it. Baines has an opposite field double to get the fourth inning started. Now it's Morrison. Eckersley, the stretch and the pitch to Morrison is a two and a one. That makes three in column five. Ground ball third, that's Lansford. He's going to throw to Perez for out number one. Now it's Bernazard. Baines takes his lead off second. Eckersley, the pitch, that's a two, that's a 45, that's a 47 in column one for Bernazard. They struck him out. Okay. So there's six strikeouts now for Eck. And with two outs, Baines still at second for Allman. Eck the stretch and the pitch. That's a four and a 22. That makes 26. In column three, ground ball, third base. That's Lansford. He fires to Perez, and that will retire the White Sox in the fourth, and Allman is going to be missing some time. He's going to miss the next three games. So we played three and a half. And there's no score in Boston. So it's Rice, Perez, and Lansford, four, five, six hitters for the Red Sox coming up. This one's grounded to first. It's Squires, and he'll do it himself. One gone in the fourth. Now it's Perez. Tony's 0 for 1 with the strikeout on his ledger. Hey, struck him out. That's the third for Burns. It's the second for Perez. And there's two gone in the bottom of the fourth. For Lansford, is 0 for 1. Two and a three. Makes five in column three. Here comes Baines. It's a looper. He's going to get there for out number three. So we're going to go to the fifth with no score in Beantown. Top of the order for the White Sox, LaFleur, Squires, and Fisk against Eck. Good pitcher still. We had a good game going. One for two for LaFleur. He has stolen a base. Three, it's a four. That's a 23. That's a 27. And column three, it's a looper over second and a base hit. Base hit for LaFleur. Now, we have to roll one die. We have a mandatory roll here. So Squires is up, and the pitch. And there goes LaFleur. Allenson fires down, and they get him. On the caught stealing 2-6 is the putout. So Squires is up now with nobody out. With one out, sorry, and nobody on. Mike is 0 for 2. The pitch from Eckersley is a 3, and a 39 makes 42 in column 2. Ground ball comebacker. Mike gloves it, or I'm sorry, Eckersley gloves it and throws to Perez, and Squires is out for the next game. Yep. All right, dropping like flies in the White Sox lineup. Now it's Fisk, one for two, pitch, 
is strike three swinging. Seven Ks for Eck now. We're halfway through this one with no score. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth. It's the bottom of third of the Red Sox order. Hoffman, Allenson, and Miller. Hoffman's 0 for 1. The pitch from Burns. Hey, he struck him out. That's four for Britt. Burns has allowed three hits. Eckersley has allowed six hits. But they're both throwing a shutout. Allenson, 0 for 1. Two, a struck him out. That's five Ks for Burns. And now two outs in the bottom of the fifth, and it's Miller. Two and a four makes 23 in column three. Center field, here comes Lemon. He dives, he's got it. That retires the Red Sox in the fifth. We've played five complete and decided nothing. There is no score. Luzinski, Lemon, and Baines coming up for the White Sox against Eckersley in the sixth. Luzinski's one for one with a walk. Three and a two. And it's strike three. That's number eight for Eckersley. Now it's Lemon. Chet's 0 for 2. Four and a 22 makes 26 in column three. Base hit through short. Gets past Hoffman into left field. Now Lemon's got to go. Here's our roll. Innings one to six is mandatory. There he goes. There goes Allenson. And the throwdown is in time. So La Russa's trying the running game, and it just ain't working. Bain's up now, one for two. Four and a 12 is a 16, and that's going to be trouble. That's going to be trouble. It's over Evans' head. Evans hits Stapleton with the relay. The relay from Stapleton to Lansford is in time. It's a 9-4-2 put out at third base. Baines gets credit for a double and is thrown out for the third out of the inning at third base. Oof. That's some ugly baseball. We got the bottom of the sixth coming, and it's the top of the Red Sox order. No score in Boston. Evans, Stapleton, and Rudy. Pitch from Burns. The two and a six makes eight in column five, and he walked him. Now it's Stapleton. Rudy is on deck. You know, when you watch the game uh, on YouTube, it's really striking how Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall both talk about Rudy as a feared hitter even though by this point in his career, it really wasn't, but the reputation really lingered for Rudy. All right, so Stapleton is up. Um, burns the stretch and the pitch, and Stapleton is bunting. It's a two, and a two. It's hit towards Squires. And it's going to be a good sacrifice. Squires flips to Bernazard covering. Evans moves up. And that will give the Red Sox a man in scoring position with one out. Now it's Rudy. And Rice is on deck. Joe is 0 for 2. The pitch is trouble. That's a 6. That's a 3. And a 16. That's a 19 in column 6. And it's going to be hit to right. The catch. Evans is tagging. He will advance to third. He is now 90 feet away. First base is open and Rice is at the plate. Well, isn't this an interesting how do you do? Rice hit 284. The man after him, Perez, hit 252. 
First base is open. I'm going to pitch to Rice. Burns, winds, and delivered, delivers. That's a 34 in column 3 for Rice. And that's going to be stroke to right. It's going to split Baines and Lemon, and it's going to score the first run of the game. Evans trots home. Rice has a double. It's one nothing Red Sox. Now it's Perez. On deck is Lansford. Pitch to Perez. Burns the stretch. And the pitch home is a 19 in column 6. High into right center, but not too deep. Baines under it, and he'll take it. The Red Sox get a run out of all that. On one hit, they leave one, and after six, it's one nothing Boston. So just as they did in real life, the White Sox are called upon to come from behind. Bottom third of the order coming in the White Sox order in the seventh. It's Morrison, Bernazard, and Allman. Morrison's one for two. The pitch to Jim is a four and a 42 makes 46 in column three. Leaping catch by Hoffman and there's one gone in the seventh. Now it's Bernazard. Tony is 0 for two. That's a 19 in column six. We've done that several times. Evans toward the line, he's gonna make the catch and that's one down, da two down. And now Allman, who's 0 for 2. That's a 2 and a 7. That makes 9 in column 5. And he walked him. Tying run aboard. Now it's LaFleur. Could send him here, I guess. Allman did steal some bases. LaFleur's 2 for 3. Eckersley the stretch and the pitch is a 37 in column one for LaFleur. Ground ball, second base. Stapleton is going to throw to Perez, and that will retire the White Sox in the seventh. So it's time to stretch them out in Boston. After six and a half, it's one nothing Red Sox. It'd be Lansford, Hoffman, and Allenson in the Red Sox seventh. Pitch to Carney. Carney Lansford's 0 for 2. The pitch is a 2 and a 5. That makes 7 in column 2. It's popped up. Fisk throws his mask away and puts the pop-up away for out number one. Now it's Hoffman. Glenn is 0 for 2. The pitch is a 34 in column 6 for Hoffman. It's a short fly left field. LaFleur coming on. LaFleur's got it. Two down. Now it's Miller. I'm sorry, now it's Allenson. Then Miller, if Allenson reaches. Allenson's 0 for 2. This grounder is to Bernazard. He gloves it and throws to Squires for out number 3 in the 7th. We go to the 8th, and it's one nothing Red Sox. Burns throwing a 4-hitter. Eckersley throwing a 2-4-6-8 hitter. We call that scattering hits by the time you get to eight hits, but the Red, the White Sox have not scored, and they've been adventuresome on the base pass, wasting some outs. Top of the eighth, two, three, four hitters. It's Mike Squires, Carlton Fisk, and Greg Luzinski coming to the plate. Mike Squires is 0 for 3. Eckersley still going, throwing the shutout. Pitch is a 2 and a 45, makes a 47 in column 1. Hey, struck him out. And that is number 9 for Eck. Up now is Fisk. He's 1 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Luzinski is on deck. Pitch to Carlton. 
is hit to right. Evans under it and puts it away for out number two, and now it's Luzinski. Greg is one for two with a walk. The pitch from Eck. Grounded to Hoffman. He gloves it. He throws to Perez, and that retires the White Sox in the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. And we're going to get a new White Sox pitcher. Uh, he's just going to warm up in the bullpen. We're going to get uh, Farmer and Hickey throwing in the bullpen. Lefty righty, double barreled action. Burns flips his card now to his B ratings, and Miller comes to the plate. One for two with a double. Then Evans, then Stapleton. 9 1 2 hitters for the Red Sox in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch is a ground ball. Tony Bernazard. He flips to Squires, and there's one down. Now it's Evans. One for two for Dwight. This one also grounded to Bernazard. He flips to Squires, and there's two down. And now. It's Stapleton. Stapleton, one for two, and a bunt on his ledger. Burns, winds, and delivers. That's a 62 in column six. Going to be down the left field line. LaFleur's got to go get it, and he will, but Stapleton's got a two-out double with Rudy, on with Rudy coming to the plate. Rice is on deck. And here comes La Russa. He wants Farmer. And it's going to be Ed. Hickey continues to throw. Farmer is on. The White Sox closer and all-star in 1980. Rudy is 0 for 3. Stapleton's at second. Two outs. Bottom of the eighth. one nothing Red Sox. The pitch is a two on Farmer's card. It's a 39L on Rudy's card, so that's a 41 in column two, and a comebacker. A comebacker to Farmer. He takes a couple steps towards Squires and flips to Mike, and that will retire the side in the eighth. So we're going to the ninth, and Ex Eckersley has a one nothing lead. And it's going to be Bergmeier and Stanley throwing in the bullpen for the Red Sox. For the White Sox, it'll be Lemon, Baines, and Morrison, unless I make some moves. Face Eck, one nothing uh, Red Sox. We're in the top of the ninth. Chet Lemons, one for three. The pitch from Eck is grounded to Hoffman at short. He gloves it and throws to Perez, and there's one down. Eckersley is two outs away from a one nothing shutout on opening day. The pitch to Baines. Baines has two doubles. He's two for three. Morrison is on deck. The pitch is a 37 in column one, and that is a ground ball to Stapleton. He gloves it and throws to Perez, and there's two down, and now it's Morrison, one for three. Let him bat, and the pitch is a two and a 21 that makes 23 in column five topper in front of the plate allenson gloves it and fires to first and it's wild allenson Fires it down the right field line. Morrison is going to take second and gets to second on the error. So it's a single for Morrison plus 
And E2, getting him to second. Now it's Bernazard. Bernazard is 0 for 3. Almond is on deck. They're going to let Eck try and finish it. The stretch, he checks Morrison. The pitch home is a 4 and a 4. And that's an 8 in column 3. And that's a base hit to center field. Miller charging hard. Morrison's running is a 4. Miller is a four, so that makes hmm. They're gonna wave Morrison unless I roll a six. Morrison's gonna score on this single by Bernazard. And he scores. It's one to one on a single with two outs in the ninth. That's going to bring on Stanley as Eckersley's day is done. He goes eight and two thirds, allows 10 hits, allows a run. It's not earned. And The steamer is coming on to take over for Eckersley in the ninth with two outs. Bob Stanley, 382 ERA in 1981. He was 10 and 8. He pitched 35 games and 99 innings. Now it's up to Bill Allman. An extra base hit could score Bernazard. He's on first. There are two outs. 1-1 one, one ball game. Stanley to the belt. And pitch to Allman is a 3 and a 7. That makes 10 in column 5. And he walked him. Two on now with two outs. Lead run, 180 feet away at second base in Bernazard, and now it's LaFleur. All right. LaFleur, two for four, stolen base and a caught stealing on the day. Stanley, the stretch, and the pitch is trouble. This is trouble. That's going to be a five, and that's going to be... Into left field. Rice is going to box it around out there. Scoring easily is Bernazard. Here comes Allman. It's 3-1, and LaFleur is going to get all the way to third base. With two outs, now it's Squires. That's going to do it for Stanley, who comes in, promptly gives up a walk and a triple. So he brought his arsonist tools with him, and they're going to bring on Stanley to face Squires. I'm sorry, Bergmeier to face Squires, the lefty. And Mark Clear will start throwing in the bullpen. Squires 0 for 4. Not going to hit for him because his glove is so good that they got a two-run lead. So he's going to bat against the lefty. The pitch from Bergmeier is going to be a base hit for Squires. That scores LaFleur. 4-1 White Sox. It's a four-run explosion in the ninth inning. Fisk comes to the plate. Bergmeier the stretch. Checks Squires. The pitch home is a 47 in column one for Fisk. Hey, struck him out and that will retire the side, but the White Sox, they wait until there's two outs, but they score four on four hits and leave one. 
So we go to the bottom of the ninth, and the, so the White Sox suddenly have a 4-1 lead. So Farmer is on. Hickey and now Lamar Hoyt are throwing in the Sox bullpen. Going to be a new left fielder. It'll be Rusty Kuntz. In for LaFleur in the bottom of the ninth. LaFleur with a huge day. Three for five. Two ribbies. A run scored. A stolen base. And maybe the game clinching triple last inning. All right. So LaFleur is out. Kuntz is in. And now it's Rice. Lansford and Hoffman, 4-5-6 for the Red Sox. They got plenty of thunder, too. Let's check the bench, see what's sitting there. They got Yaz, they got Remy. They got some legs they can call on. Reed Nichols. So they got some stuff. Rice is one for three, and he botched the floor's triple on the top of the inning, so let's see what happens. Hey, he struck him out. Farmer's first strikeout. Rice's first strikeout. There's one gone in the ninth. Now it's Perez. 0 for three for Tony, the pitch. This one's grounded to Squires. He gloves it. He flips to Farmer covering, and there's two gone. Ed Farmer, one out away from an opening day win. Lansford 0 for 3. Hoffman on deck. The pitch. It's a 5. It's a 7. That makes 12 in column 5 for Lansford. He dotted him. That one got away from Farmer. And so the Red Sox have a base runner. Hoffman is up. Allenson is on deck. So it's going to be Remy batting for Hoffman. And Yaz is standing in the on deck circle. Should Remy reach? And Yaz, in that case, would be the tying run coming to the plate. Farmer, the stretch, and the pitch. And this is trouble. That's a three. That's a 51. That's a 54 in column six. It's going to be a line drive to right field for a base hit. Now we have to do a range check. Get to the kitchen. Oh, my God. The gas is on. Get to the kitchen. It's a range check. We got to check the defensive rating of Baines. Five or a six, and it's going to be a double. Nope. Holds him to a single, and it's first and second now for Yaz coming to the plate. So Remy's at first. Lansford's at second. Allenson is due, but he's not going to bat. It's going to be Yastrzemski. And here comes Tony Larusa. He wants his left-hander, Kevin Hickey. Yastrzemski is the potential tying run. Farmer went one inning, a strikeout, a hit allowed, and a hit by pitch. No runs yet. Both runners are his responsibility. He cannot lose it. Hickey, the stretch, the pitch to... Yastrzemski. It's a 3. It's a 20. It's a 23 in column 3. It's hit to center. Here comes Lem, and he's on the run. He's on the run, and he's got it for out number 3 in the ninth. That is your ball game. So, let's go through the totals. The White Sox took their time getting around to it, but they did pull out a 4-1 victory. Four runs for the White Sox. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve hits. 
and they committed no errors. The Red Sox, one run on six hits, and they committed one error that you can count, although Rice didn't help matters by boxing LaFleur's triple in the top of the ninth. The winning pitcher is Farmer. He is 1-0. and all. The losing pitcher will be Eckersley with unearned runs. And the save goes to Hickey. That's obviously his first. So it's a 4-1 opening day White Sox replay game on April 10th, 1981. Thank you for joining me. Let me know if you want some more 1981 White Sox baseball, courtesy of Classic Replay. Put that in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day. So long, everybody.